Welcome to Continental Championship Wrestling, home of the National Wrestling Alliance, featuring champions from throughout the continental United States. And now to your host, world-renowned wrestling commentator, Gordon Soli. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much, and welcome once again to Continental Championship Wrestling. An outstanding hour in store for you. We're going to be seeing, uh, as we progress along with this hour, a, a Texas bull rope match pitting Tom Pritchard against Roy Lee Welch. We're going to be watching the Tennessee Stud and Robert Fuller against the New Guinea Headhunters. We'll be seeing Steve Armstrong in action and a lot of other things upcoming during this next hour, so by all means, do stay tuned. And uh, we have our first match coming up right now, so let's turn it over to our ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, this special television event is one fall with television time remaining. It is a special bull rope match. Now making his way to ringside, 225 pounds, he is the United States Junior Heavyweight Champion, Tom Pritchard. gentlemen from the state of Oklahoma 225 pounds he is the self-proclaimed king of professional wrestling Roy Lee Welch Roy Lee Welch getting set to move out against Tom Pritchard a Texas bull rope match now that's eight feet of bull rope with a three pound cowbell suspended in the center you can see uh, Pritchard now checking the, uh, the uh, bell itself. That bell can be used in any manner uh, that the either opponent decides to use it. And as you can see, it can become a very, very dangerous weapon indeed. There's the bell. And uh, this Texas bull rope match is underway. Both men trying to gain advantage here, and they're up against the ring ropes. Referee calls for the break, but Pritchard wasting no time. Meets out a lot of punishment in a hurry. And so, Pritchard from Texas and uh, Welch, of course, from Oklahoma. Both of them uh, eminently uh, familiar with uh, uh, rodeos and cowboys in Texas and Oklahoma cattle. Welch brought back into the ring that Texas bull rope working. You know, in looking at these two, I'm also reminded of uh, Chris Von Colt. Who, by the way, we'll be seeing a little bit later on, for those of you who may have missed it last week, here on Continental Championship Wrestling. Uh, you might... Ah, uh ah, -uh, he's got that uh, cowbell. And uh, before he had a chance to use it, however, Roy Lee Welch turned that to his own advantage. Bad mistake on the part of Tom Pritchard. As I was saying, uh, Chris Von Colt, who stole the Alabama belt last week, still has that belt. He is now being fined $1,000 per day. And you heard me correctly. Per day. As long as he holds on to that belt. We'll have more information about that a little bit later on. But uh, that's the story on Mr. Colt. We'll be uh, looking at that uh, episode uh, later on in the program. 
Roy Lee Welch pressing an advantage here now on Tom Pritchard. Using that rope as a uh, stranglehold, if you will. Pritchard trying to come back to his... Uh, Referee is Roy George, and he's trying to keep order in there, but uh, with a Texas bull rope match, that becomes a little difficult. And Roy Lee Welch is certainly uh, pressing every advantage possible. On Cork's a hard right hand. Puts Pritchard back to the canvas. Forearm smash and a hard right hand to the side of the jaw. Pritchard lashes out with a boot to the midsection, but Welch fires back. And now Welch again using that bull rope. Great effectiveness. Tremendous battle between these two. And Pritchard has already been lacerated. He's got some problems now. Roy Lee Welch very definitely in control of this situation. As Pritchard back to the uh, canvas again and utilizing that rope for everything that he has with it. Hard, hard right hand. Uncorks it once again and again. Roy Lee Welch now exploding with a series of right hands to the side of the head. Pritchard smashed into the turnbuckle. Pritchard looking for somewhere to go when his sensibilities left him. Trying to drag him from corner to corner. And if he can touch all four corners, it could be all over for uh, Mr. Pritchard. Pritchard grabs that rope, hangs on. And Welch trying to get to that far corner once again. And it's Pritchard breaking it up very nicely. outside or inside the ring proclaiming a victory here Five Roy Lee Welch sets him up high vertical suplex Welch now steps across the prone form of uh, Tom Pritchard goes up on the ring ropes Dives off that knee into the chest of Tom Pritchard. And a series of blows to the head. Pritchard. That claret flowing rather freely from the head now. Welch starts to go to the corner. He touches the first corner. He tries to get to the second corner, but Pritchard blocks his way. Pritchard now trying to battle his way back to his feet. Pritchard back to his feet, lashes out. A boot to the midsection. Riley Welch closes in. And now brings that cowbell up. Ooh, brother. Caught Pritchard flush in the forehead. Catches him again with that cowbell. And a third time that brass cowbell has been put to work. And it's Pritchard back to the canvas. And Roy Lee Welch standing over his fallen foe. Now hooks that bull rope around his throat. Texas bull rope match. And all of this is within the confines of the match itself. No argument about this. Welch very much in control of the situation. Pritchard caught again, top of the head. Pritchard fires back. He staggers Welch. He's got Welch in a lot of trouble now. Pritchard has that cowbell. He misses, but he connects on the second swing. He's 
got him a uh, calf rope now. He's making it to the second corner. Let's see if he makes it to the third corner. He's got him bulldog, no question about it. He makes the third corner. Let's see if he makes it to that fourth corner. Well, let's see how the referee rules. The referee rules in favor of Tom Pritchard. The referee rules in favor of Tom Pritchard. But Welch is not satisfied here. And he is delivering a lot of punishment. Welch with a snap mare. Welch had a snap mare and now using that uh, bull rope as a hangman's knot. Wait a minute. when Adrian Spree just hit the ring. He cleared the ring in a hurry. And Roy Lee Welch is beating a hasty retreat. So the exotic Adrian Street coming to the aid of a fallen Tom Pritchard. Pritchard indeed, however, took the match. No question about that. A victory for uh, Tom Pritchard. And Roy Lee Welch leaves. Mr. Welch is somewhat happy. Let's get the official word. Ladies and gentlemen, the top of eight minutes, 33 seconds, your winner, Tom Pritchard. At Rick's TV and Appliance Supercenter, we have the holiday... Swing returns to Columbus, Mississippi, Lavender Coliseum on Tuesday, December 30th. Match time is 8 p.m. Continental Championship Wrestling presents Holidays 1986. In a double loser leave town night, it will be Steve Armstrong against the mystic Kevin Sullivan. The loser must leave town. Outside interference means immediate suspension. The U.S. Junior Heavyweight Championship goes on the line. The winner wins the title. The loser must leave town. Dr. Tom Pritchard against Roy Lee Welch. Continental Championship, the bullet against the flame. Southern Street Fight, the Tennessee Stud and Robert Fuller against the New Guinea Headhunters. Southeastern Championship, the exotic Adrian Street against the hustler Rip Rogers. Continental Tag Team title, the Nightmares against Jerry Stubbs and the Dirty White Boy. I want to take a moment right now to talk to uh, Tom Pritchard and uh, the exotic one, Adrian Street. Before I do, let me get a chance to get their breath. Let me turn it over now to uh, the ring and uh, Mr. Welch and the hustler Rip Rogers. I am your Southeastern Heavyweight Champion. It's not Adrian Street. It won't be Adrian Street. It'll never be Adrian Street. And Street, I'm gonna give you one more chance, baby. One more. Richard, you made a mistake of your life now, son. I beat you all over this ring in this bull rope match. You're nothing! You want to sign a loser leave with me, mister? Title against loser leave, you're going to lose them both. I'm going to be here in 87. Well, let me talk to Mr. Pritchard. Let me just say this. It has been signed. Loser leaves town, and the winner gets the United States Heavyweight, Junior Heavyweight Championship. You didn't beat nobody, and I'm going to show you who's going to be sticking around. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a special televi television tag event. Television time remaining. There is no disqualification.
Judge Robert Fuller. His partner from the great state of Tennessee, 265 pounds, the Tennessee Stud. And their opponents now making their way to ringside, managed by Mystic Kevin Sullivan. Combined weight, 520 pounds from New Guinea, the New Guinea Headhunters. Okay, the New Guinea Headhunters getting set to move out against uh, the Tennessee Stud and Robert Fuller. And uh, all I can say here is uh, the Tennessee Stud and Robert Fuller came to the ring and uh, they're ready for action. There's no question about that. The New Guinea headhunters are going to have their hands full. And they are wasting no time whatsoever. In fact, I'll tell you what, these fellows are dressed for a southern street fight. And they're acting like they're in one, too. I'll guarantee you that. They are not wasting any time whatsoever. It's feet and fists now for the New Guinea headhunters. All four of them in the ring at the same time. Now, yeah, these New Guinea headhunters, they've hurt a lot of people down the road. There's no question about that right now. They got Robert Fuller outside the ring. There you see is their uh, head uh, henchman, if you will, uh, Kevin Sullivan. You can hear the crowd. The thousands jamming Boutwell Auditorium in Birmingham, Alabama, as they chant USA. They're strictly on the side of Fuller and the Tennessee Stud. Tennessee Stud is down, and so is Fuller. And so the New Guinea headhunters have had things beginning to go their way now. Referee Roy George trying to get some kind of order restored here. Trying to get some kind of Australian tag team rules uh, prevailing, but uh, they haven't had much success at it. Tennessee stud coming up rather slowly. Robert Fuller unleashes a good elbow. And the Tennessee stud has that boot off, and he's using it as a weapon. You talk about uh, somebody being geared up for a street fight. We've got it going now. Hey, this is absolutely ridiculous, Sully. These guys know nothing about a southern street fight match. You know, these ignorant southerners right here, the Fuller boys, everybody knows. Uh, wait a minute. That's Robert Fuller and the Tennessee stud. That's horse something, because you know better than that. That's Ron Fuller and Robert Fuller. My men don't know nothing about a sudden street fight match, but I'll show them what a sudden street fight match because I've kicked every sudden is, but from one end of the south to the other. All right, the words from Kevin Sullivan. Uh, and uh, Let me ask you this. Do you, do you like this? People getting beat? People getting whipped with belts? Are you into this sort of thing, Mr. Sully? Well, it's... Uh, a little bit kinky right now, but I would say that the the stud and uh, Robert Fuller are letting him have at it. Uh, they're letting him have at it, Mr. Fuller. Mr. Fuller's whipping one of my boys. I might like that kind of stuff. You might like that kind of stuff. But these men are from a foreign country. They know nothing about this, Mr. Soli. They haven't traveled to the islands and pollinated the Pacific. Now, that's the opinions uh, voiced by one Kevin Sullivan. Meanwhile, the Tennessee stud... This is ridiculous! This is ridiculous! These guys get belts. These guys got cowboy boots on. These are whipping guys. They're athletes. They know nothing, nothing about Samoa. Well, I'll tell you what. The New Guinea headhunters leading the area now. And so... Kevin Sullivan has gone to head him off if he can. There you see it. Robert Fuller and the Tennessee stud. Standing tall and standing proud in the center of the ring. And maybe we can get a word here with uh, 
Mr. Sullivan, regarding what uh, just took place. Well, I'm going to tell these Southern boys, these Southern bred idiots, let me tell you one thing. You're talking about a Southern street fight match, something these guys know nothing about, but they sure know about violence. Hey, remember what happened to Jimmy Golden? He still can't see out of one eye. Robert, we broke your hand one time. We can do it again. And Ronald, I can't wait to get a hold of you. Southern street fight match. I'm going to take these guys behind the barn, show them something about Southern street fight matches, because anybody can be the Southern in a street fight match. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. Let's see what the Tennessee stud and Robert Fuller have to say. I'll tell you what. You go take them somewhere and teach them something. Take them back to the sewer where you found them, Sullivan. That's exactly what you can do with them. Now, you just got a little taste of a Southern street fight. Returns to Columbus, Mississippi, Lavender Coliseum on Tuesday, December 30th. Match time is 8 p.m. Continental Championship Wrestling presents Holidays 1986. In a double loser leave town night, it will be Steve Armstrong against the mystic Kevin Sullivan. The loser must leave town. Outside interference means immediate suspension. The U.S. Junior Heavyweight Championship goes on the line. The winner wins the title. The loser must leave town. Dr. Tom Pritchard against Roy Lee Welch. Continental Championship, the bullet against the flame. Southern Street Fight, the Tennessee Stud and Robert Fuller against the New Guinea Headhunters. Southeastern Championship, the exotic Adrian Street against the hustler Rip Rogers. Continental Tag Team title, the Nightmares against Jerry Stubbs and the Dirty White Boy. Ladies and gentlemen, this special television event is one fall with a 15-minute time limit. Introducing first at 255 pounds, he is, wants to be announced from anywhere but Birmingham, Alabama, 255 pounds, Mike Fever. And his opponent from Marietta, Georgia, 232 pounds, Steve Armstrong. Okay, Steve Armstrong getting set to move out against Mike Fever, one fall. And it's Steve Armstrong locking up very quickly. Fever getting a full arm drag and twist. Reversal now by uh, Steve Armstrong. He has the full arm drag and twist. And so Fever, who wanted to be introduced from anywhere but Birmingham, Alabama, has had his wish. And obviously the people here in Birmingham are not too fond of Mr. Fever. Up against the ring ropes. Steve Armstrong coming across. Beautiful drop kick by Armstrong. Has favor to the canvas, and uh, I have more important things to talk about than Kevin Sullivan has joined us, Mr. Sully. I've never been so embarrassed in my life. The Fuller brothers took advantage of my headhunters. You understand? They didn't know what was going on. How can seven boys do something like that? You know that seven people, their mentality is low. They tricked these headhunters in something. But I'm going to tell you what, Mr. Soli, 1987, I'm wiping this slate clean. On the first weekend of 1987, I want the Tennessee Stud and Robert Fuller in a cage against the headhunters. You understand? On television, on the first weekend of 1987. Because you see this the, the seed from Mr. Bob Armstrong in the ring? Stevie Armstrong, well, he's going to be gone, too, because I'm wiping the slate clean in 1987. Happy New Year, Mr. Zoli. <laughs> well, the comments from uh, one uh, Kevin Sullivan. Interesting challenge that he's put forth, and I'll tell you one thing. 
I know the Tennessee stud and Robert Fuller well enough to know that I can almost guarantee you that that match will take place because they do not turn down a challenge. Top wrist lock and a good reversal by Steve Armstrong into a hammerlock. Armstrong putting the pressure on Fever now. As we said, of course, one fall. By the way, I want to say a special uh, hello and recognition to uh, Greg Severin of the Marietta Daily Journal. Interesting story about uh, Scott Armstrong, Steve's uh, younger brother, who Steve, of course, in the ring right now, the hammerlock on fever. Fever into those ring ropes. That forces the break. Referee is Roy George. And he moves extremely efficiently as an official, no question about that. Once again, full arm drag and twist by uh, Steve Armstrong. Ah, uh -uh, reversal by Fever. Caught him with a lariat. And that put Armstrong to the canvas. Fever, looking very pleased with himself, has Armstrong in... Uh, a spot of trouble here. Catches him with the back of the elbow. And now a rear chin lock. All right, has him tied up by the weight. There's a big special coming up. That'll be at the Alabama Theater in downtown Birmingham on February 15th. Big shake, wrestle, and roll. The exotic Adrian Street, Miss Linda, Wildcat, Wendell Cooley, the Armstrongs, and uh, many, many more, including yours truly. Uh, a great uh, music and entertainment special. It's at the Alabama Theater, downtown Birmingham, on February 15th. All right, fever, keeping the pressure on him. Rear chin lock again by Fever on Steve Armstrong. He's got to look for a way to go here. Got himself in a lot of problems up into those ring ropes, into the uh, turnbuckle, and it's Fever delivering uh, the shoulders to the midsection. Good Irish whip. Fever charges in, and it was uh, Steve Armstrong moving to one side. Steve Armstrong uncorks a wild right hand. Good drop kick by Armstrong. Has Fever to the canvas once again. Irish whip. Wow. Caught him on the back of the elbow. Another hard right hand to the side of the head. Reversal here. He misses, and it's Armstrong catching him with a lariat. He got the three count. He got the three count, and if we can, let's take a look again at that lariat in slow motion. You'll see what we're talking about. Fever had no chance as Steve Armstrong delivered that lariat with uh, beautiful force, and uh, that put him away for the count. So it's a one, two, three, and Steve Armstrong is the victor. Well, we've been talking about, of course, uh, all of the things that have happened in 1986, and uh, you heard Kevin Sullivan talking about 1987. One man who will be back in 1987 is the Flame, and the Flame is aptly named because he is an extremely dangerous adversary in the ring. Uh, I might point out that uh, the Flame is capable of doing exactly what his name implies, and that is throwing a flame. Let's take a brief look at when the flame was here just about one year ago. Well, we've seen what kind of devastation the flame is capable of inflicting upon people. He is indeed at over 300 pounds 
one of the most dangerous adversaries in the uh, sport of wrestling today. The Flame had some interesting comments regarding the future of the wrestlers and of Continental Championship Wrestling. Let's go to this interview with The Flame. Exile time is over. I've been in exile long enough. All the time that I've been here, I've had one thing and one thing only on my mind, and that is to destroy any way that I can Bob Armstrong. The bullet. You know, Bob Armstrong, hate is a terrible thing. It eats at your inside just like a cancer until your whole body is consumed with that cancerous hate. And that's what I have inside me for you. Nothing but hatred. And I never knew that a man's putrid body, I'm talking about yours, could be worth as much as they're paying me to destroy you. And I don't need any pay because my payment will be in the pleasure that I receive from seeing you lying there on the mat writhing in pain and begging, begging me not to kick you anymore, me not to hit you anymore, begging me not to burn you anymore because Bob Armstrong just like that sign over my back shoulder says, this is going to be your exit, permanent exit from professional wrestling. Imagine the world's sharpest knives working at... Hey, let me take a moment right now to remind all of you in Gordo, Alabama, that championship wrestling is coming your way on Tuesday, January 13th at the high school gymnasium. So those of you in Gordo, make your plans to be there on that night. And of course, on Tuesday, December 30th, Championship Wrestling does present a holiday 1986 spectacular in Columbus, Mississippi at Lavender Coliseum. It will be Continental Title, You and the Flame. Well, I understand, too, that the promoters are going to charge regular prices for this card, which, incidentally, is the biggest card I've ever been on in my entire career. And I'd like to say happy holidays to everybody because that night I'm going to give everybody a good present because I hope nobody in Columbus, Mississippi likes the flame, Gordon, because I'm going to do one thing for them. I'm going to put these Mississippi toothpicks right here around his fat head, and ain't nowhere he can go but down, as in burnout, if you know what I mean. Bye-bye. In Columbus, Mississippi, Tuesday, December 30th, I promise you, I'm going to take the man's hood, and he'll be gone forever. Fair enough. Loser leave town, my friend. Loser leave town. Uh, it's a double loser leave town, as a matter of fact, that night. But there's a clause in me and Kevin Sullivan's match saying that outside interference means suspension. So anybody coming in, you're gone, baby. In other words, one of me or Kevin is gone. That's fine with me. I like this part of the country, Kevin Sullivan. You're gone. Bye-bye. All right, let's listen to these comments. You know, I can understand why Columbus happens to be the Bullets' favorite town. Because every one of those fans in Columbus should be wearing a mask. They're so ugly. You see, they're like you, Steve Armstrong. You know, you were so ugly as a child, the only way the dog would play with you, your old man hung a bone around your neck. And when you were born, instead of slapping you, they slapped your mother. So I'm going to do what your father should have done. I'm going to take you over my knee, son, and I'm going to give you a slapping in front of all those people, and then I'm going to give you a real serious beating because I'm going to end 86 right there in Columbus by you packing your bags and leaving this area. See you later, Stevie boy. I want to take just a second in the show to say a special hello to... Cabrina Smedley in Munson, Florida. Uh, that's from Wildcat Wendell Cooley, who uh, sends along those special regards. Also, a hello to the Dismukes family from Center Point, uh, who watch us each week. And, uh, doggone it, I think. It looks like Jimmy Golden. Let me see if that is Jimmy Golden. If it is, I want to get him over here for just a minute. You all want to hear a word or two from Jimmy Golden? All right, let me see if I can get him over here. Jimmy Golden, of course, has been on the injured list uh, for quite some time uh, due to things that have happened to him. Jimmy, uh, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to see you here tonight, but I see that you're still uh, encumbered with that eye. Well, that's true, Gordon. Uh, you caught me off guard asking me out here. I, I just came by. I was on my way to Knoxville, Tennessee for Christmas, and... Uh, I just stopped by to say hello to Ron and Robert, who they're back there in the shower, and uh, 
uh, just speak to them for a few moments. And uh, but I'm real happy that you've asked me out here, and it's good to see everybody. Want to say hello to them and you and a lot of other people. How how about the eye? Uh, how's it coming along, Jimmy? Uh, the eye is doing a lot better. I can I can the vision has come back quite a bit, except for uh, uh, the light. The reason I wear this pipe patch out here is all the strong lights and. Uh, Sometimes uh, during the day in the sunlight, it's real strong. I have to wear the patch. But uh, as a whole, it's coming along real good, except for uh, maybe the peripheral vision is, is off a little bit. Seeing out of the side, I can't see from the side too good. But uh, as a whole, it's coming along pretty good, Gordon. Well, I'm sure delighted to hear that. Uh, obviously, we're all looking forward to seeing you back in action in the near future. Well, as, since you brought that up, uh, I might as well just mention the fact that, uh, you know, it's this is a very rough sport that we're in and uh, people are injured all the time I've had several serious injuries myself uh, this being one of the worst ones that I've ever had before and being out this long of a time I have come to the conclusion that uh, you know being a family man now I've got a, a child that uh, they're depending on me a lot you know and uh, if you, you get hurt in this sport you're, you're hung up sometimes you know and uh, being as dangerous as it is, I've decided that I'm gonna give it up uh, uh, You're gonna what? Well, it's it's. I think it's time, Gordon. Uh, you know, it's a dangerous sport. Uh, a lot of injuries happen to you, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of people depending on me. You know, so I just figured that it's time that uh, to hang it up for a while. Well, uh, a rather shocking announcement now from Jimmy Golden about. I didn't come out here to have any trouble, Gordon. I don't want to come out here. I don't want any trouble. Wait a minute. Hey, I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not out here for any trouble either. I just want to say, I heard that you're going to retire. You were one of the greatest competitors of all times, Jimmy Golden. And I told you this, if you had been with me, it wouldn't have ever happened. By the way, how is the eye? Oh, come on, man. Are you? Let me have some. Let me have some help here. Come on. Oh. You talk about something totally disgusting. That is dis as disgusting as anything I've ever seen in my entire lifetime. Well, the exotic Adrian Street helping Jimmy Golden back. And, um, well, may I take this opportunity right now to apologize. I had no idea that... Uh, Anything like this would possibly happen here. Well, that's one of the dirtiest things I've ever seen right there, Gordon Soley. He had no business coming out here. It wasn't his time anyway. But a week ago, a lot of you people seen one of the dirtiest things that ever happened to me in my career, Gordon Soley. Chris Von Cold handcuffed me to the corner right there in that ring and beat me almost an inch of my life, Gordon. If it hadn't have been for a good friend of mine, he may have got the job done. But that was his one mistake right there. He never finished his job. And if you'd roll this piece of tape for some of the people that never seen it, we'll give them a look at it. Well, I might just point out once again that Chris Von Colt, who uh, stole that title, uh, and you can see here exactly what's happening, that handcuff being put around uh, Wendell Cooley's wrist, and he is now being fined $1,000 per day. Well, you can see right here, Gordon, as I was coming in the ring earlier, it wasn't showing, but he hit me with his helmet in the back, and he hit me in the head with his helmet and the handcuffs, too, and he's got me pretty well lacerated right there, and he's going to take a upon himself to handcuff me and cuff me in that corner right there and take a beating to me with his chain. Well, you can see here he's having his own problems, even trying to get that cuff around, but he nonetheless does get it done. And this, of course, is the beginning of a very, very sad sequence for you. Well, that's right, Gordon, because you can see right here he beat me pretty good, and he's going to take his chain out in just a second. He's going to go to beat me with it. I can't get loose. I'm trying every way I can to bust those cuffs. But, you know, those things are made out of steel, and I'm not that strong, and nobody else I know of is strong enough to break a pair of handcuffs. But I was going to give it everything I had because I knew what his intentions were, was to try to put me out of professional wrestling. Well, and, of course, we just heard Jimmy Golden's uh, retirement conversation, and uh, we saw what happened to him just moments ago. And we're talking about this being the most dangerous sport in the world, and it obviously is. Well, that's right. You see right here, he's going to take his sunglasses. He's going to try to take my eyesight away. Well, he didn't get the job done, Gordon. He didn't get those things dug in there like he wanted to get them dug in because I had one hand on his keeping him from doing what he was trying to do. But nevertheless, he handcuffed me and beat me with his chain and attempted to take my eyesight, and he will pay for every drop of blood I spilled. I'll promise you that. 
Well, I can certainly understand, and you've certainly got the crowd here at Boutwell behind you all the way. Well, I want to tell you, he came in here, he says he came in here on a mission that he was going to, that he didn't like the USA, he didn't like the South. Well, I don't care if he don't like the South, I don't care if he don't like the USA. I told him one time, and I'll tell him again, he can pack his bags and get out of here because I don't like him either. Now, he says he's going to come in here and run down my country. He's not going to run down my country. I never myself personally spent any time in the service, but everybody in my family spent time in the service. Chris Von Colt, I have people that I visit in the hospitals, the VA hospitals, who fought for our country, Chris Von Colt. I've been with the family who has lost members of their family over there fighting for our country, Chris Colt. And as far as you go, I'm going to promise you, I'm going to get my Alabama title back. And after what you've done to me, I'm going to get a lot more than just a belt back. I promise you that. And God bless America. Well, amen to the comments made by Wildcat Wendell Cooley. He is indeed the Alabama heavyweight champion. And we've got a match coming up right now. By the way, as we get underway with this match, let me remind all of you, if you are a member of a... Ah, oh, beautiful... Uh, Set in full body slam by uh, the dirty white boy on the nightmare. So quick offensive action by the dirty white boy, co-holder of the Continental Tag Team Championship. They lock up once again. Good block by the nightmare. Good block once again. This time it's the nightmare retaliating. So the dirty white boy feels the sting of that canvas on his back. If you're a member of a civic organization or a fraternal organization... Wait a minute, Robert uh, Fuller just joined me. Look, I can't believe that that skunk come out here, that lowland, and stuck my cousin Jimmy in the eye with the problem he's got in his eye. He challenged my, I won't say my brother, the Tennessee stud, a good man and myself to a cage match, baby. I'm saying for Tennessee stud and me, we're accepting, Gordon. Let it be known. Fair enough, and so it is known that uh, Robert Fuller accepting a cage match on behalf of the Tennessee stud. And meanwhile, the Nightmare's uh, moving uh, rather effectively. Bottom wrist lock to a lateral drop and takeover by uh, the Nightmare on Mr. Perfect uh, Jerry Stubbs. And they've got the Nightmare back against the ring ropes. Drives a shoulder into the uh, midsection, then a snap mare takes the nightmare off his feet again. Wow. Hard right hand staggers the nightmare. Nightmare firing back, however. Irish whip caught in a high backdrop. Inside armbar. Once again, let me remind you, if you're a member of a civic organization, a high school coach or athletic director or a member of a fraternal organization, and you would like to have Continental Championship Wrestling in your area, uh, and if you have a facility that is available, please contact Scott Armstrong. And the number is area code 904-932-4800. That's Scott Armstrong, area code 904-932-4893. Scott's not there. Uh, his answering service will take care of it. Leave your message, and he'll be glad to get back in touch with you. It could be a very handy fundraiser for uh, your organization. All right, the nightmare is back over that top rope. Full arm drag and twist on uh, the dirty white boy, Tony Anthony. And so the nightmare, retaliating a bit in kind. Keeping the arm bar well in place. Now the tag is made, the other nightmare moves in. This is not to say that they have not been moving in and out with some degree of regularity. Sort of a uh, suplex type uh, arm drag takedown. Now with an arm bar once again going to the inside of the arm. 
That'll help cut off that circulation to the hand. The dirty white boy having his problems. Fires him off the ropes. And tripped up. Nightmare tripped up. Second Nightmare protesting to the referee, but to no avail. Now some quick double teaming going on on the Nightmare by Stubbs and the Dirty White Boy. Snap Mayor and Stubbs back in action once again. The Nightmare powers out before the count. Ah, uh -uh, the Nightmare jammed into the knee of Tony Anthony, and then the tag is made, and so Stubbs outside the ring, Tony Anthony back inside. Nightmares have got their problems now. Forearm into the chest. Once again, the tag is made. Jerry Stubbs moves in. Elbow across the pectoralis majors, but the nightmare powers out before the count of three. Five minutes gone in the match. And got some double teaming here. Dirty White Boy off the ropes, double teaming on the Nightmare, punishing him. And uh, you can hear the crowd and their disapproval of the Dirty White Boy and his tactics. Headbutt that puts the uh, Nightmare back to the canvas and then a chokehold of him is 8 p.m. Continental Championship Wrestling presents Holidays 1986. In a double loser leave town night, it will be Steve Armstrong against the mystic Kevin Sullivan. The loser must leave town. Outside interference means immediate suspension. The U.S. Junior Heavyweight Championship goes on the line. The winner wins the title. The loser must leave town. Dr. Tom Pritchard against Roy Lee Welch. Continental Championship, the bullet against the flame. Southern Street Fight, the Tennessee Stud and Robert Fuller against the New Guinea Headhunters. Southeastern Championship, the exotic Adrian Street against the hustler Rip Rogers. Continental Tag Team title, the Nightmares against Jerry Stubbs and the Dirty White Boy, plus the Alabama title, seven big match. Ladies and gentlemen, in the time of eight minutes and 10 seconds, your winners, the Nightmares. Let's see if we can pick that up where it appeared that the uh, Nightmares may have switched off when they were outside the ring. And uh, as you can see, it certainly gives that appearance. And uh, all of a sudden, they capture that one, two, three count. And so the Nightmares, no matter how you want to interpret it, the Nightmares have a victory over the Continental Tag Team Champions. Well, I have the Nightmares and Wildcat Wendell Cooley with me right now. Before I talk to them, however, let me talk to the losing team first, if I may. Mr. Stubbs and the Dirty White Boy, gentlemen. Hey, Gordon, let me tell you one thing. Just because we were the loser team, don't make us losers. You understand? You got three losers up there with you right now. And we're not no losers. Now, we're still standing here with the championship. We are the tag champions. Now, I know I'll be the first one to admit anything can happen and somebody can get beat, and we did get beat. But I don't think it can happen twice. So Smurfs, if you got it in you, you bring it right back out here because we'll give you a shot again, boy. Hey, boys, we proved to you it takes three seconds to get pinned. And brother, put those belts on the line, and that's all it's going to take to have new tag team champions. Fair enough. Uh, what can I add? Come on, Club No Connection. If you got any guts, put the titles on the line like my partner said. We will be the champions. I told you, Von Cole, I'd be prepared. You're not going to surprise me again. When the f you are the rottenest, the low-life scum American champion that I have ever seen to represent Alabama, and that is my belt, and I am keeping it. Well, I'll tell you what, everybody's got a lot to say. And uh, I hope Mr. Colt understands that he is being fined $1,000 a day for carrying that Alabama belt. Yeah. Wait a minute, Wildcat. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wildcat Wendell Cooley charging down there uh, to the ring after uh, Chris Von Colt. He is in the ring. And our time is rapidly running out here. 
But look at this man. Wildcat is exactly that. He is a wild man, and we've got a spear sixer free-for-all going on. Our time is rapidly running out. Don't forget, next week, our annual highlights program.